Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patron, Craig T. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. Quick update from yesterday, the article I was reading talking about Porsche's expected IPO valuation being between 60 and $80 million. I did not catch it. Of course, that should have been 60 to $80 billion with a B. From the Euro, new car assessment program, Asian newcomers make strong safety debut, but the Model Y steals the show. The highly anticipated Tesla Model Y did not disappoint and shoots to the top of recently published five-star cars. This Model Y came from the Berlin Gigafactory, scored a 97% in the adult occupancy protection and a near perfect 98% in safety assist. In a minute, I will put this into context for you to see just how good these scores really are. With full points for its lane support and new cabin camera based driver monitoring system, the Model Y camera only vision system performs remarkably well in preventing collisions with other cars, cyclists, and pedestrians. I understand safety in crash tests might not be the sexiest of topics, but those of you that have been around for some time know that for years now, I've been saying, one of the things I like most about Tesla is that they truly engineer for safety first and foremost. It's not about the tech, it's not about all of these cool bells and whistles, it's all about safety as the number one priority at Tesla. This is the thing I wish more of the general public actually knew and understood. The Euro NCAP's Secretary General had this to say, congratulations to Tesla for a truly outstanding and record-breaking Model Y rating. Tesla have shown that nothing but the best is good enough for them, and we hope to see them continue to aspire to that goal in the future. This is directly from a new Tesla blog posted today. The Model Y received the highest overall score among any vehicle tested under the Euro NCAP's newest, most stringent test protocol. This was testing the Model Y's ability to protect adults, children, and vulnerable road users like cyclists and pedestrians, as well as its safety assistance features. It's tough to see, but for the overall score, Tesla coming in first place with the Model Y, second place was the Lexus NX. The Lexus had an overall score of 89%, the Model Y, 92%. For the adult occupant protection score, Model Y, first place. And a fun fact, Tesla has what are called far side airbags in between the two passengers in the front. So in the event of a crash, they don't collide with each other. There are definitely still plenty of people out there that think Tesla will have to use radar and maybe they'll be right in the future. But for now, Tesla Vision, Tesla's camera only system, comes standard in all Tesla vehicles delivered in North America and Europe. This score was a result that many did not believe was possible without using radar. And one more for good measure, the safety assist score, Tesla Model Y, number one. Coming in with a score of 98%. Second place, a Subaru Outback, 95%. Here's some context for how good these scores really are from the Euro NCAP website, sorting all results. The yellow icon is the ability to protect an adult. The blue is protecting a child. Green, vulnerable pedestrians. And purple is safety assist. Sorting by adult occupant protection, Tesla 97% first place, second place 94. Sorting by child protection, it ended up down in 12th place, but still did a quote, very good job. For vulnerable pedestrians, Tesla came in second place with a score of 82, behind the Lexus NX with 83. And finally, the category everybody is talking about the safety features, Tesla scored a 98% ahead of second place coming in at 94%. If we drop down the safety assist category, we see Tesla scoring near perfect marks in each category, speed assistance, occupant status monitoring, the in-cabin monitoring, lane support, and automatic emergency braking car to car. For the child occupant category, the only one where Tesla was not first or second, if you scroll down, you'll see that it was due to a lack of features, the first of which being ISOFIX. Isofix is basically a standardization, a fitting system that attaches child restraints directly to the frame of your car using connectors. Tesla currently not using this system here and here. This integrated CRS is just a built-in child restraint system that Tesla does not offer. So just make sure your friends and family know that Teslas are the safest cars on the road and Tesla continues to engineer and innovate to improve safety first and foremost 
not just fun features and cool new technology. Monroe uploaded a new video talking about Tesla's Giga castings on this new Model Y from Austin, and Corey said it's much improved from the rear Giga casting in the early 2020 Model Y, as that one did not include the rear crush cans or the cross car piece. Corey said there was a huge amount of integration here that's happened over just the last two years. Everyone always asks about service and repairability of these new Giga castings, so here's what Corey had to say. So in the rear, if you take a large impact in the rear and you're smashing far up into the left rear or right rear corner, the vehicle is most likely going to be totaled. Front, uh, you can take a little bit more of an impact and there's crush cans and sacrificial pieces to repair. And if you look at a traditional stamp steel body, if you're getting in a bad enough accident where you're messing up the rear shock tower or you have cross car geometry issues or your front shock tower or you've torqued the, the engine bay if you have an engine, the car is going to be totaled. So repairability for the rear, like if, if someone were to say, oh, I got to replace the whole casting, I don't think it's going to happen. Absolutely not. Definitely Even not. we got it out, but at the detriment of destroying the body. So basically the front underbody has a bit more repairability than the rear underbody would. However, if these Giga castings were to be damaged in an accident, if that same accident were to happen to a non Giga casting vehicle, that car would most likely be totaled anyway. This should not come as a surprise as obviously Tesla would have engineered around this, but having Giga castings will most likely not result in a higher number of cars being totaled in accidents. And again, if you're in an accident that's bad enough to damage the front underbody casting, there is still some level of repairability built into that casting. Corey said it's amazing to see how few parts really remain when you remove both Giga castings. Of course, fewer parts means cheaper and faster to make, but the way Tesla does it, it also finds a way to make it safer in the process. An interesting use of, of materials here on the body, but so few parts. I mean, imagine working in this body shop, Jordan. I know we have three or four people at Monroe. We have Scott Hildreth, who's worked at, in body shops for years, and we have Paul Lester, who worked in body shops for years. They were both blown away by how few parts are truly left. Of course, other automakers are now starting to integrate their own version of Giga castings, but remember, Tesla already has years of iterating on this process. New custom alloys and integrating more and more parts to become part of this one structural unit. So to any analyst who's out there still saying that, well, whatever Tesla can do, Legacy Auto can do better and faster, it's just a laughable argument and completely removed from any sense of reality. From not a Tesla app, it looks like Tesla theater mode may be coming in a new app update. Basically, if you're playing a video full screen, it will allow you to bring up the controls at the bottom of the screen and the controls on the left while still playing that video. Looks like it may be a little rough around the edges from this preview, but you get the idea. I personally love this feature on my iPhone and hope that eventually Tesla can have something as seamless and easy to use as that. Moving on, we have some updated wait times for vehicles out of Giga Shanghai. For the Model 3, rear wheel drive and performance, the only two available, waiting times have been dropped down to six to 10 weeks, Previously, they were sitting at 12 to 16 weeks. Looking at the Model Y, the rear wheel drive variant is one to four weeks. The long range is now 10 to 14, and the performance is now six to 10. Previously, the Model Y long range and performance were both sitting around 16 to 20 weeks. Good tweet from Ray for Tesla, I did check the numbers. So talking about BYD compared to Tesla, remember, BYD would not be profitable without incentives from the government. So removing these incentives, once again, in China, Tesla would be the only profitable EV maker. Comparing the numbers halfway through this year, Tesla doing $5.58 billion in net profit from $35.7 billion in revenue, BYD revenue, 21.8, only generating a net profit of around 0.52, Remember, once again, incentives removed, BYD not yet profitable. This stuff is important to know because now there are plenty of people saying that BYD has passed Tesla as the world's biggest EV maker. Remember, about half of their production and deliveries are ultimately hybrids, and once again, they're not yet doing this profitably on their own. Ford just released some August sales data just for the United States market, coming in with 5,897 EVs for the month. Looking at the Mach-E, it sold 3,100 
120 units in August, this up from 1,448 August of last year. And so far year to date in 2022, Ford has sold 25,700 Mach-E's. Scrolling down to the F-150 Lightning, 2,373 units for the month of August. So far this year, only 6,842. So Ford still struggling to ramp the F-150 Lightning production, not really capitalizing on the first mover advantage, at least not yet in the US market. We know that Ford is starting to source LFP battery packs for the F-150 Lightning that should help with this production ramp, but that's not expected to happen until next year. Waymo posted this on its Instagram, stopping for this stop sign, but it's one of course where you have to wait for the road worker to actually flip the sign, which of course this Waymo vehicle did in this situation. I'd personally just be very curious to see how Tesla's FSD beta would handle a situation like this for the first time. I would guess it would just stop as it's a regular stop sign and then continue, maybe before waiting for the road worker to flip the sign, but let me know what you guys think. The California grid is still on high alert as Sacramento has reached 116 degrees Fahrenheit on Tuesday, surpassing a record that was set around 100 years ago. The California independent systems operator that oversees California's grid said peak power demand on Tuesday reached 52,000 megawatts, surpassing a previous high of 50,000 back in 2006. I don't know about you, but Tesla's mission seems to be becoming more and more important with each passing week. That'll do it for today. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.